The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling the chief priest of the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written to the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed seeing the star and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. So Happy New Year again. This is the earliest that Epiphany can come in a year, January 2nd. They must have been on the Camel Express for this year to get to Bethlehem, the early bird special for Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So the beautiful gospel story that we hear today, a couple of uh, uh, quizzes to ask. How many kings are mentioned in this gospel that we just heard? Three, two, or one? Two. Jesus and Herod. How many wise men were mentioned? Three, two, or one? None. Today's gospel doesn't mention wise men. It's implicit that the wise women, their wives, sent them away for a while. Number three, how many magi were mentioned in the gospel? The gospel doesn't mention magi. It mentions it mentions astrologers, they, 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 they made the magi, they, uh, they came seeking Jesus, they were uh, priestly practitioners, astrologers, and so the story that we hear today uh, in, in this gospel is really a summary of the principles, the dynamics of the spiritual life that bring us back to church week after week and year after year. And so at face value, it's a simple story with lifelong lessons for us to ponder. So watching the night sky with scrupulous attention for signs of God's purposes, the Magi evoke in us the importance and the uh, alertness of the spiritual order, the spiritual reality of life. And so we must keep our eyes open to see what God has up for us and what we want, the ways we want to respond in 2022. Once they saw the star, they moved despite the length of the journey. Sometimes people know, we know what God wants us to do, but we don't act either out of fear or laziness or the influence of bad habits. And so the Magi teach us to move. And when they spoke to Herod, 
about the birth of this new king, he tried to use them to destroy the baby. So applying that to us, when we try the best that we can to walk the path that God has laid out for us, we can sometimes expect opposition. We can expect people to derail us. So they came and they returned to their country by another route. Fulton, Bishop Fulton Sheen commented so magnificently on that last line. He said, of course they did. For no one comes to Jesus and goes back the same way he came. So the Magi's quest reminds us that throughout our lives, we're continually searching for God. That's why we come to prayer. That's why we come to the Eucharist. Uh, and we can never really settle back into a comfortable piety and complacency, even though we may feel that we found God already. We're baptized, commun First Communion, Confirmation. We found God. There's more up ahead. So pack up and keep searching. We also need to respect at the same time the journey of others who are also, like us, sincere in the church, in the, in the search, even when their ways differ from ours. The truth is too big for any of us to claim all our own. So let's reflect upon this beautiful story and how it applies to us here and now. And you know what makes the Magi so reliable and relatable to us is that they don't embark on their journey under their own volition and by their own modest powers. In fact, they are led. They are led first by a star, and later, at the end of the gospel, they're led by a dream. So this willingness to be taken by the hand of heaven and guided along the way is a sign of deep humility and a hearty amount of trust, trust in the higher power. And I use that phrase intentionally because when you think about it, think about those three on the journey. They clearly didn't know the one who compelled them who compelled their journey. And yet, like children, they fell in behind the leadership of the star and they went. They trusted in a higher power. Travel wasn't easy then. Uh, it was expensive, it was perilous, and decidedly uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, you don't take to the roads those days unless there was no other way to conduct your business. And what was their business? Word comes up three times in the gospel today. Their business was homage, to pay homage to this person. Homage is one of those things that you can't do by mail, by a letter. It requires presence, not material presence, but personal presence, an act of submission by which the Magi were prepared to offer their presence to this unknown king. And you know, the one thing that was missing in their lives was pride because even though they were men, they refused to ask for directions. So when they got to Jerusalem, these trusting souls, asking directions, found themselves making inquiry of the least likely person in Israel to join in honoring the king. Happily, they didn't allow Herod's authority to rule over their inner imperative of the dream. And so the dream directed them to take another route back home. So as I reflected upon this gospel over the last couple of days, I think it raises some question for me, perhaps for you, and the f six questions. The first question is, from whom are we most like likely to take direction? Who are we seeking in taking direction in our lives? Secondly, do worldly powers impress us enough to derail our path? to take us off the journey, to take us away from the root. Three, do we pledge allegiance only to our own authority, our own opinions, our own will? Four, is there anything outside of ourselves that might compel us to fall on our knees and to lower our eyes? And five, what most of all, are we willing to take the journey of faith, which is really an enterprise that requires us by definition to surrender, to change and to grow? Are we willing to be led along the path that we can predetermine, predestine or control towards this goal, like the Magi, we can only vaguely apprehend? 
So this beautiful gospel raises for us many questions about our own personal journey. They're hard questions, but this is what Epiphany demands of us. God manifests the divine presence before the world, but only, the only way to see it is to be led like a child. So our goal as Christians is to bring light to the world by our presence and through our actions. Uh, we are the light of the world too, as Jesus points out, and we become, we become the light we follow. We become the light we follow. And we give what we ourselves have received. And so if we take the journey to the Eucharist and eat God's food, we become God's food, God's presence for others. It's a hungry world, world out there. We've, and we've already, by our presence here today, determined to go home to take a different route in 2022. Another aspect of this story that inspires me is the ever new message that I think it gives to our young people, especially those who are here at Mass today. You know, when we're young, we especially need guideposts to reach spiritual and intellectual maturity. The Magi realized that the star, in contemporary terms, the star was their GPS. They needed it especially when their guidance system was hacked by Herod and his dark forces of evil and control. That's exactly really what, what happened, you know, to use in contemporary terms. They needed to discern the nature of the deceit and the exploitation they encountered. And we all know that elements of that continue to assail all of us, all of today's searchers. So how stark is the contrast between the secret plots of Herod in his palace and the brightness of the star that shines for all of us to see along the way to Bethlehem. And so from the Magi, generations of young people can learn lessons of life. First, that we need the comfort and diversity of fellow travelers, friends and companions, to help keep us on the right course. And secondly, we also need to discern between the sinful intent of figures like Herod, who hide behind secrecy and privilege, and the innocence of the Christ child, who offers himself in very humble, simple surroundings. When we acquire that gift of discernment, we more readily do what the Magi did. We bow down and we offer our gifts, however humble they might be. And finally, <clears throat> the Magi offers all of us I think, uh, insight into the uncertain times of COVID-19. The Magi was searching for meaning at a difficult time. <clears throat> there was this restlessness, there was this disquiet that they experienced, and today we see signs of a similar disquiet. You know, as a result of COVID-19, people are, many people are reevaluating their lives. I was reading a, a story in a recent Catholic periodical, and researchers report that between January and October of 2021, last year, one in four people in the U.S. quit their jobs to do something different. Additionally, COVID-19 has made it impossible to ignore both the continuing political divisions among us and the wealth and the wellness gap that isolate us from one another, leaving many people vulnerable. And you know, at the same time, while some of our sick uh, and their families suffered an isolation that, that uh, magnified, even overshadowed the physical effects of the illness, other people discovered Zoom and other ways to be in direct visual contact with loved ones hundreds of miles away. And you know, I, I was reading this article and in, they speak about the book, Pope Francis' recent book, Let Us Dream the Path to a Better Future. And Pope Francis shares uh, some things that are very applicable to this beautiful Feast of the Epiphany. He describes our time as a change of epoch, not simply a change of time. And he says what's accelerated it, of course, is the coronavirus, but it's a moment for reading the signs of the times and avoiding the trap of easy answers. Pope Francis says, a gap has opened up between the realities and the challenges we face and the reality and the solutions that are available to us. So <clears throat> that gap becomes a space to reflect, to question, and to dialogue. 
So as we come together this morning to celebrate Epiphany, let us look to the Magi as models, inspired by the gap between their knowledge and their hopes. They set out to seek meaning that their lives had not yet fully given to them. They reflected together on the signs of the times and they sought wisdom from foreigners, confident that the truth from another quarter would only add to the truth they already understood. So let us share the Magi's humble curiosity. Let's appropriate their uh, courage, their confidence, as we enter this new year to seek, to find, and to follow Jesus, the light of the world, who brings us here today. Happy New Year and happy journey for 2022.